In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what goes through my mind in a live weekend league gameplay of Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become better at Madden 21. And if you want to get better at this game, I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. We release videos every single day that can help you get better as an offensive, as a defensive, and as a gamer in Madden 21. Now, if you're new to the channel, uh, the, the exact offense and the exact defense that I'm going to be running are going to be linked in the description of this video. I'm going to be running the nickel 335 wide on defense and on offense. I'm going to be running the Jets, uh, specifically going to be spending most of my time in the bunch tight end offensive formation. Uh, that has been my favorite formation as of late. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you have uh, probably face this at some point but the way that i run it i've heard is a little bit different um and so again if you want to get exactly how i run it uh you can get that guide in the description both guides for 15 bucks so you can get the offense for 15 bucks and you can get the defense for 15 bucks relatively affordable uh try to keep that affordable for you and they're straight to the point they're very very in-depth and again if you want to get that that's the best way to support the channel support everything that we're doing allows me to continue to be able to do this uh for you guys so uh anyways starting off you're seeing here that i'm going to be making some adjustments i'm actually uh, a little bit new to you know kind of some of this stuff here so i'm gonna have to like take a time out uh right now actually because i don't want to you know i don't want to not have my players uh in in position uh, so anyway, I'm going to go through and just kind of, you know, again, just making my adjustments. My user is going to be DK Metcalf. I've got uh, um, Taylor Mays, and I've also got Grant Delpit. And I think we're all set up now. So uh, anyways, I'm going to be running a lot of match defense. That's my favorite way to play defense right now in the game. Uh, so again, if you want to get my entire uh, formula for how I do that, you can get that in the description. But anyways, it's kind of starting off here. So we're going to be going. Um, now, this is a nice little tactic right here. It's actually an interesting little deal. Um, if he runs middle, high, low, sometimes this, this guy on the right here will just kind of burn. Um, you see, like, how he gets him over the top there, and he's going to go ahead and moss me. So looks like this guy's probably played this defense before. So I've got to kind of watch that two wide receiver side. There's an easy formula for how to stop that. Um, but it is a little bit of a it, – it's honestly just it, – it really is just a glitch. I mean, that's all it comes down to. Uh, but anyway, so uh, right here, you're going to see that I'm going to kind of create a cover two almost style of defense here. I'm going to use some main coverage, going to use kind of like a cover six borderline and just kind of see how this works against it. He's going to be manned up. I've also got a little bit of a flat zone there uh, to take that away. And that should have been an interception. Should have had the pick right there. It was really, really good defense in my opinion, but it is what it is. So it's going to bring up second down and 10. And like I said, you know, starting out in any game, um, one of the things that I really believe that is very, very true is I think it's super, super important to have a, you know, kind of a base defense at which you can kind of work from, right? So having a formula, having a system um, that you can kind of come to in the beginning of the game, just to, to kind of get things rolling, right? What's your plan? What's your system? Those are all things that uh, we, we talk about. And so, you know, here we're just trying to kind of keep it, you know, everything in front of us here, just kind of force them to do some stuff and see, that's what they're going to do. A lot of times they're going to do that right there. They're going to make mistakes because they're trying to force things through. What you want to do as a defensive player, especially on defense, you want to do some of this on offense, but you definitely want to do this on defense. You don't want to break. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to bend too early. Okay. You want to force them to have to gradually work up the field. Um, that's going to be worth its weight in gold for you. You see, there's the match defense doing exactly what he wanted to do, and that's going to bring up a fourth down situation. So, you know, really, he completed one pass. Other than that, we played fairly decent defense, I felt like. Um, I like to take opportunities like this right here uh, just to kind of set up some other audibles that I might go to in different situations. Uh, the nickel normal is, is probably my third uh, favorite formation. My, my, my favorites are nickel 335 wide, nickel 335, and then I love the, the nickel normal. The beauty of the 4-6 playbook is you have all three of the, in my opinion, best defenses within one little package that also allows you to have the best personnel. So it's just the best defense of the game, and that's why, that's why I've been running it all season long. But we're going on to offense here. And offense is similar to defense in that you don't want to break too soon. You don't want to, like, show your hand too soon, right? Especially if you're playing someone experienced. They're going to know that you can do this or this or this. 
But a lot of the things that they're going to have to do is they're going to have to you know, deal with tendency. And so as an offensive player, what you want to do is you want to establish, I am going to do this and this and this. Like I'm a, You have to establish something. And so you have to be intentional about what you want to actually do. Um, because every play that you call is actually going to be putting into the mind of your opponent something, right? There's something that you're doing. Um, here it looks like he's going to be going to some down 146. Now, down 146 is not good against the run. So if I ever need to, I can just run the ball on this. But we're going to get out here early. And right there, a little bit risky. A little bit risky of a throw. Not, 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 in, I've just been kind of interested. I find that a lot of people in Mutt, uh, this is just what I've been finding lately, but a lot of people in Mutt have been running man, a lot more man to man coverage. It was zone, and then now it was man, and then now it was zone. And um, anyway, so a lot of people are running man to man coverage. Right there, that is something that happens a lot. I've noticed this too, um, and I don't know why this happens. But occasionally, they'll like randomly just glitch glitch out. I don't know why. Um, I don't know where it comes from, but it drives me absolutely insane. But anyways, here we go. Let's see if he runs man-to-man -man again. He's going to go zone. I'm going to try to air truck here. That was actually a really bad strategy. It was actually a really bad strategy. And he's just kind of like boxing me, so that's awesome. Not a good first drive at all. Not a good first drive at all. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm actually gonna use, um, I'm gonna use some motion here. So we're gonna curl and then we're gonna like fade. And the reason why we're doing this is just to try to pick up the first down. We're just trying to get the first down here. Um, that's really all we're trying to do. So we'll see if we can't get out of the pocket. And there we go. That's the throw exactly right there we wanted to make. We just, if he was running like a Mabel coverage and he was taking everybody out of the middle of the field, uh, we knew we'd be able to hit that. Now, right here, I mean, he is begging us to run the ball. So we're actually going to take his bribe here. We're going to run the ball um, with Henry. Just do a little air truck. Just get up, get some yardage. And the reason why I like to do this is just occasionally you got to let people like this know if they're going to run coverage all game, that's fine, but we can run the ball. Uh, we can actually run the ball at a pretty high level with Derrick Henry. we got Derrick Henry with that air truck ability that does a really, really nice job. Now that brings up brings us up into a third and four. I'm actually going to go to the run one more time. I um, actually like this look right here and got his user kind of cracked down on the user there. Get out and run. Good job by Henry. And, um, you know, so far we're doing okay on this drive. We've kind of recovered. We were, we're off to a little bit of a bad start, uh, but we have kind of recovered. And right here, just going to take what the defense gives us. Brandon Ayuk gets one of my favorite little routes to consistently hit. Just, you know, a little quick, just a little quick drag right there. Nothing too fancy. Um, right here, you know what, right here we're gonna, um, we're actually gonna try to burn him. If he's in cover three, we're just trying to see if he's, if he isn't at, indeed in cover three. Um, just kind of trying to force the issue a little bit here. He actually is gonna be a man to man, which is unfortunate. Um, he ends up bagging us all the way across. So, man to man is, man to man is kind of glitchy, man. I'll tell you, um, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, um, a lot of people are having success with it. Uh, even though the one step ahead's kind of over, like the one step ahead meta, um, there's not as many. I mean, he might be running one steps on his guys, but I tend to think he's probably just running, you know, uh, how do you look? Here we go. Um, so you see here he's got pick artist, acrobat, acrobat, pick artist. His user, he's got like pick artist enforcer. So just got to be kind of mindful of that. And right here, we're just going to kind of try to get the ball. I don't know what Johnson's doing in the game. He should. There's no no reason as to why he should be in the game here. And I'm actually not too happy with the situation I'm in. We're going to have to take the three. I'm not very good at kicking field goals, and this is like a, a little bit long of a field goal for me. Um, I don't know if I'll make this. We'll see. Janikowski is the best kicker, and I missed it. See, and that, that that's the frustrating part about Mutt right now. Um, because they've wanted to, like, make the best players – play better i feel like they've actually made the other players especially in the in the category of kicker um they've just made them play like not as good and you see it right there my kicker uh missed a kick anyway it is it is what it is it's on me but i gotta be able to i gotta be able to get full power right there so he 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 goes up three zero. i get ball at halftime i was like really disappointed in the fact that you know 
you know, some of that's on me for not managing the fatigue of my team and all that. So I, I get that. Um, and I, I don't know why I'm trying to hit stick. I don't know why I'm trying to hit stick right there. I was not pleased with my offense at all. Defensively, I was fine. Like, we literally, I mean, if you actually think about it, we really only gave up one pass. Um, so I was okay with the way we played defense. Uh, just the way we played offense really is not where we want to be. So we just got to be, you know, kind of aware of that. And I don't feel like – I feel like it was just we just miss reads. I feel like we've been really sloppy offensively. And I think it's because whenever you play weekend league, especially it's like the first couple of games into a weekend league, you start to get like a lot of random looks. Like you just get random stuff, you know. And uh, that's the that's the thing that I think's you know, it's like you're not getting – nickel 35 or you're not what you normally would get if you're playing like a top tier player they're going to do like three to five things right um if you're playing kind of an average player then you don't have any clue what they're going to do <laughs> like that's that's the challenge i think of weekend league all right right here should be let's see i don't i don't know how i feel about this defense let's see if he runs it spy there that's see then i don't know why that's not an interception like, I don't know why that's not an interception. We play great defense, and um, but it is what it is. And, and, and really, guys, this is the thing. Um, you will watch, if, if you watch my games at all, um, you're going to see that I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with my main defense until I really feel like there's something that you're be able to find like that's really consistent. Um, but I want to, it's kind of similar to offense. It's a little bit more, um, I think, delicate on defense. But the concept is very similar in that we want to establish this, so that's going to lead you to have to run these other things, which then we are going to be prepared for. That's that's really in essence, you know, kind of what we're doing. So uh, anyway, right here, did I did not get my adjustments in, and I'm probably going to get dotted here. I actually got a really good sack from Charles Haley. Uh, Charles Haley did his thing. And I'll tell you what, the pass rush in Mutt is so much more intense than the pass rush in Regs. Like, sending to – I would never – I mean, very, very rarely, in my opinion, should you ever send more than two people in Mutt just because of how good the pass rush actually is. Like, it's, it really is a good pass rush. You get there in, like, in, you know, three to, three to four seconds, right, uh, at least most of the time. Uh, here we're just going to do a little fair catch. I almost dropped it. I don't know what's all going on, but – all right, we need to go score. This is actually a big drive for us. Um, and we just need to, like, get in a rhythm. Offensively, it's not that we're playing – I mean, we aren't playing great. But the biggest thing is that, like, we're really, really out of rhythm. Now, he came out in, like, a 3-4 odd type of thing. You've got to expect that this might be, like, a cover four drop scenario. So we're just going to, like, plan for that. And we're gonna wait on that delay fade. Wait on the delay fade. Did a great job, and there we go. That's and that might be like the spark that we need. I actually need to switch playbooks too. Um, I have. I don't have the um, the run heavy playbook. I'm, I'm running the Jets playbook, which I, I, the reason you would want to run the Jets playbook is if you are going to run um, like if you're going to run a lot of bunch and bunch tight end. But I'm mainly just running bunch tight end right now. Uh, I've kind of gone away from bunch. Bunch is still really good. Um, I've just not personally, you know, been running it. Uh, so I got to kind of watch that. And right there, I don't know why my tight end didn't release. That, that's one of the like little things that drives me absolutely crazy. You do the double team, you roll out, and for whatever reason, your tight end just doesn't release, and you end up running. This happened to me all the time, and that's just you know, I guess it's just on me. Okay, so like right here, I feel like he's gonna run man to man, so we're gonna go to a little bit of a man beater. Um, Cause I just feel like, yeah, he might not be, he might be in like zone. Nope, he's a man. Okay, there's that tight end corner route. George Kittle finally did something and uh, we're able to get into a decent position. Now uh, we're gonna go to tight end corner. See if we can't get something ticking here. And he's got nobody on Brandon Ayuk. And see, that's another one of those things where it's like, I need that flat route. I, you, For whatever reason, you can't swerve catch flat flat routes uh, as well as you used to be able to. Okay, so like right here, I love this situation. We're in a pretty decent spot. Um, 
and we're going to go with this route combo, primarily thinking he's going to be in man. We're going to step up, climb the pocket, just kind of slide, get down, get a first down. And uh, we're going to we got two timeouts left. Uh, I'm going to run one more play, and then I'm going to call a timeout. And this next, this, this other play that I like, I actually really like this in the red zone. Um, it's kind of a simple way to run. Eh, I, I'm not in a good setup here, but we're going to run it anyway. Make that throw. We almost got in. That's okay. That's okay. That's that's kind of what we. I mean, that's honestly probably a little bit better of a scenario for us. Um, okay, so like right in this situation, I like to bring Henry down to the the running or the fullback, and then I'm gonna bring um, Reese. Reese is gonna be the uh, tailback. So I got Henry here. I got Reese here, and then I'm gonna come with like something like this. Now I'm actually gonna take a timeout um, right here. Which is not a great decision, but I, I don't want to obviously lose possession or lose where I'm at. Um, I just didn't get my adjustments. I didn't have all my players set. But you'll see, like, I've got all my tight ends and stuff there. And then really what we're trying to do is we're just trying to see if he's – so, like, here, okay, he comes out in goal line. Okay, now this tells me, okay, maybe I can go to this or this or this or this or this. Um, normally this actually doesn't do that great against a fullback slam. So let me just slam it into there. And it does do – you see that right there. So the goal line defense can normally shoot a goal line fullback dive. But it doesn't always shoot like a, a, a strong tight or something like that fullback dive. So we're able to go to that, able to get in. And that's a big touchdown. We weren't in a rhythm. We were actually really disjointed, I felt like, offensively. We really weren't playing great on the offensive side of the ball. Um and we're able to go in, go down, get a touchdown before half. We get ball at half. One of the major differences, I feel like, in weekend league as opposed to regs is that weekend league is a little bit different in the fact that the play clock is a lot shorter. I think the quarters are even shorter. I think they are a little bit shorter. Um, but it feels like the games are just overall a little bit more fast-paced, a little bit shorter. Um, that's just kind of the vibe that I get. And so whenever you can go up by seven and get the ball at halftime, you put yourself in a pretty decent position. Okay. Um, right here. Uh, we're gonna go to a little bit of a different defense. So you see like right here, he's gonna go to this. So you see how we've got that man coverage on him. We've got soft squat, we've got seam flat. And then on this right side, we've got a nice little cover six kind of quarter thing. So like I'm, I'm primarily right here. I need to like be aware of that. And that's a good dot. That's unfortunate for me. It's probably bad defense by me. I'm trying to remember what I did. I, I think I, it's because I went to, I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong on that. I think I took the three wreck off the hill. That was probably the biggest thing. So that was on me. All right, we're going to play some pretty, pretty wicked cover two here. And we knew that was coming. Dang it. This is like a huge field goal for him. It's bad defense by me. I let myself get manipulated a little bit too much on that drive. Um, I should have shifted his own drops, probably, or man coverage. I sat down on that tight end route. I was, I was trying to force like a, I was trying to force like a. A turnover. I was thinking he was like gonna fake the cross or hit the tight end, but that's where you got to be a little bit smarter in terms of like how much time you have on the clock. So now it's you know momentum kind of swings back to him because the, the what he just did is actually a really important thing to talk about. By getting three points for him and by me missing that field goal, now if I go down and score a touchdown, I'm in kind of a weird position. I'll probably end up going for two. Uh, I actually think it makes a lot more sense to go for two. Um, cause I, I, I just, I just think that makes more sense. I'd rather have a, a little bit more control over, over what's going to happen. Um, because if you don't get the two, then he, you know, then he'll just go for, you know, for one probably on the extra point, but it basically makes it a one possession game, um, unless I go for two. So anyway, all right, let's see if we see if the offense can get something going here. 
we're gonna test this we're gonna test this user over the top and there Moss did exactly what we needed him to do breaks a tackle gets in the end zone and we actually have to make that decision a lot quicker um, but there we go got a nice little beater and I'm gonna put the toss in my audibles just so I have it and I'm gonna switch where Derrick Henry and where Marcel Reese is um, just so I can get a little bit better. Derrick Henry's just a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, a little bit better trucker. So, like, then you get something like this. So, like, now he's in, like, a 3-4 odds. So I can audible over to this right here, and I should have a fairly good opportunity uh, to get this in for six. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But we're going to flip it, go in there, try to get that two-point conversion. We are able to do it. That's a big deal because that makes it a two-possession ball game, which is really, really, really important. So now we go up by nine points, um, and that means that, you know, again, he's, it's two possessions. So it changes everything about a game. It changes what routes he's going to have to run. It changes how he's going to have to perform. Like, the pressure completely just shifted back to him after that one play. Nice little laser there from RG3, and uh, we've got to kind of get back in. And we need to play good defense, right? We gave him two drives that we really just feel like uh, we shouldn't have given up. Um, so anyway. All right, right here we got our three wreck on the field we got our seam flats we got to be a little careful on this bunch wide this bunch wide is a little bit unique um in terms of how it runs so i just got to kind of monitor that a little bit there's the crosser uh, we're going to take that away he oh he was throwing us a book too anytime someone comes out in bunch wide i think bunch wide is actually relatively decent um but what we are going to do here is we are going to uh, send some pressure just to kind of make him have to think about it a little bit There we go. He ends up running the ball. Uh, all right, so third down and eight. And I'm trying to think. If he comes, he, if I was him, I would come out in five wide, um, which is probably what you yep, see here, five wide. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to play a little bit aggressive. Playing cover two to the wide side here, which might not be a great strategy, but we are going to do it. And we got a nice little user alert, switch, switched up on the dual crossers. And I think we're going to be able to get in there for six. And that's pretty decent defense. Um, we kind of protected the flats, the outside, where we thought it was going to go. And then we were able to kind of come back and make a user play, which was really nice. Now, right here, if I go if I go for two, it can make this 23-6, to six, which would make it a 17-point ball game, which is absolutely huge. So, like, right here, he's not playing a great defense, not really honoring what we can do. So we're going to come out, we're going to flip a play, flip a play, boom, boom, make him flip, and then we're going to try to truck, 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 and unfortunately we didn't get in there. I probably honestly should have gone to power O. Um, I kind of thought a fullback dive would be bulletproof in that situation. Unfortunately, he's able to get the stop, so good job by him. But this puts us in a pretty good position. Even though now we're still technically only up by two possessions, um, we're in a we're still we're up by two touchdowns. We're not up by a touchdown in the field goal. So he's gonna have to have two significant drives uh, to be able to work. So this is where, you know, if you wanted to shift and do a little bit more of a safer defense, maybe a zone drop type scheme, you could do something like that. I'm not gonna do that. And the main reason why I'm not gonna do that um, is just because this is working relatively well uh, for me. So we're gonna just kind of sit in our basic uh, style defense there. The three rec did a really good job. Um, that's okay. I mean, you got to live with that. Like, defense, you can't be mad at that. I mean, they're right next to him. Um, it is what it is, you know. All right, we're not going to use a three wreck here. We're just going to use a QB spy and see if he continues to go with a crossing route. Um, if he does, we're going to kind of come right in here and take that away, please. Thank you. And that's, that's what we wanted to pick on, uh, I think, a few times here. Been able to get the interception. Now we'll see what he does. Um, offensively, like if this was a serious game, like if you were really worried about like him coming back, which I'm not too worried about it, so I'm just going to come out and run my stuff. If I was really, really worried about it, I, I'm literally just – and honestly, like, I mean, this is a little bit true. Like I'm just trying to get three. I'm just trying to get three points. That's my entire goal here. Just trying to get three points, you know, using some juking and some things like that to put myself in position because if I get three points right here, we're able to go by three possessions, three full possessions of him having to be able to consistently move the ball down the field, which he's shown us he's not able to do that. 
He's shown us over and over again, he can't drive, he can't score, he can't adjust. He's shown us that, right? So, you know, this is a big deal. If we can get down here and, and, and get three, um, it's actually a really big deal. So, and, and remember, we missed the kick from 36. So we missed the kick from 36. So we need to get to about the 30-yard line just to be in a safe position. Once we get there, I'll probably shift and, uh, you know, go on conservative, you know, and start taking a little bit of clock here. So... You know, that's that's kind of the idea. If you're again, if you're really really locking in, um, we're gonna try to just kind of get ourselves back in a little bit of a rhythm. We've not been in a great rhythm offensively the last couple of games, um, and we know we need to be a little bit more effective at that. So, and here we wanted that we were trying to slide to get down, we weren't able to do that. Um, but what we are able to do here is we're able to kind of set some audibles up from this. This trips tight end offset is money. Uh, I can't stress to you how good this is. And again, we're just taking the clock. We're trying to put ourselves in a position where we can really close this out. We're trying to be a little strategic. Our G3 just took a hit. We're not going to, you know, kind of risk that at all. We're just going to go right down into this. Now, he is not a good defense to try to blow this up. So we'll see if he's able to do that. Uh, but again, you know, this is one of the harder runs to stop in the game. RPO trap alert bubble from the trip side and offset. This is one of the probably major reasons why it does make a little bit of sense. Um, in my opinion, to run the Jets playbook, even if you're running bunch tight end as a primary offense, um, because of, of things like this that it can do for you. So, so anyway, right here, um, just kind of you know try to work the ball up and down the field a little bit here, and that's 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 pretty risky. That's good D. I I mean, I'm not sure if he manned him up or if he just put him like in a three wreck, but he ended up playing me pretty good there. The one thing that did that was actually really detrimental is it stopped the clock on us. Here we're gonna try to like trying to do a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a shootout, but we weren't able to do that. We actually put ourselves in a really bad position. Um, he's ran so much man-to-man -man coverage. You have to think that that's what he's gonna look to go to. Um, so like right here, I'm actually gonna go to the mesh play. And I, I just I'm really banking on him being a man-to-man. -man. And we're able to hit him on that crossing route, Kittle. And we're okay going out of bounds right there because now we've shifted into the fourth quarter. Now we are in the complete control of the game. We're exactly where we want to be. And I have, and he it does look like he is going to quit out. But my goal right there was to run the ball three times and take a field goal. Not going to even try to put the ball in the air, completely go by three possessions and take as much clock as I could. But thanks for watching this video. If you want to get the exact offense and defense I used to win that game, they're going to be linked in the description.